Hello ladies and maybe a few gents. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode on the Grace Field Leader Podcast. I am coming to you this bright and beautiful day from northern Minnesota and we are on week two of our Fruit of the Spirit series. So tell me, what does it mean to have joy in the Holy Spirit? Not sure? Well, that is what we are going to talk about today. So let's get to it. Welcome to the Grace Failed Leader Podcast. Do you want better work-life balance? Do you get stuck in patterns of perfectionism and people-pleasing? Have you always been an overachiever but never really felt good enough, no matter how much outward success you achieve? Do you want more time for the things that matter most? Well, you are in the right place. Here on the Grace Field Leader Podcast, we focus on spirit-driven success and share the secrets to having better work-life balance as a busy woman in leadership. Here you will learn how to set boundaries like a boss, find peace of mind, and reclaim your time for the things that matter most. Hi, I'm Tanya, a wife, mom, leader, and certified Christian life coach. For most of my life, I tried to find worthiness through achievement. I spent decades people-pleasing and pouring myself into my work. I was looking for my value through the approval of others. This led me to feel burned out, empty, and exhausted. I had no time or energy for myself or my family. I realized that I was wasting time and energy looking for validation in all the wrong places. But my life changed when I finally surrendered and God showed me a different way. It is my mission to help you start living the abundant life God has for you. If you're ready to become fueled by grace and find freedom from people pleasing, if you're ready to multiply your time and impact as a Christian woman in leadership, this podcast is for you. Roll up your sleeves, sister friends. It's time to get after it. When we think about joy, we often think about or get it confused with happiness. But there is far more to joy than just being happy. The Bible says that God wants us to experience, quote, joy unspeakable and full of glory. Reference 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 8. This means that when we live our lives in obedience to Him, He will give us joy that goes beyond mere happiness. So today I'm talking about four truths when it comes to joy and what it means to have joy in the spirit. Sister, I'm talking about joy that cannot be taken away from you. A joy that does not depend on the circumstances of your life and a joy that will sustain you through good times and bad. So here they are. First truth is joy is a choice. There are two ways to experience joy in the Holy Spirit. First, we can choose to live according to God's word. Second, we can choose to follow Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. As we do, we will find ourselves growing closer to Him and enjoying life more fully we will begin to experience the joy that is Him, the joy that only He can give us. The second truth about joy is that it is a gift. Joy is a gift because it comes from God. He gives us the joy of Jesus. In John chapter 15, verse 11, Jesus says, These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. So folks, don't confuse this joy with other happy feelings. Genuine Christian joy is not attained through deep breathing or thinking happy thoughts. Joy is not just being optimistic. It is not a feeling of happiness because things are going your way. A third truth is that joy is constant. True joy can only be found in Jesus, not in worldly pleasures, money, fame, or self-reliance. 
While worldly joy is fleeting, the joy of Christ is constant. If we are saved, Christ lives in us. He lives inside every believer and we have unrestricted access to him. This does not change. Once the Holy Spirit lives within us, we have access to all of his fruit, including his joy. Being filled with the joy of the Lord does not mean that we won't experience sorrow, sadness, anger, or loneliness. Biblical joy is not so much a feeling as it is a state of being, a contentment that comes from knowing, experiencing, and trusting the Lord. And it is not dependent on life circumstances. Even during difficult times, we can still choose to have joy because of the hope we have in Christ. Paul is a wonderful example of this. Paul expressed joy even in his suffering throughout his ministry. Despite being imprisoned, he was filled with the joy of the Lord. The joy we get from worldly things is conditional and it's fleeting, but the joy from God is a contentment that is everlasting. God is the God of hope. Romans chapter 15, 13 says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. So you see the key to having the joy and the peace of the Lord is complete trust and dependence on him. The fourth truth about joy is that joy is protection. Drawing near to the Lord is protection for us. If we're filled with the joy of the Spirit, we are less likely to be tempted by the enemy to seek comfort and pleasure in other ways. We will be less tempted to be negative, resentful, and unkind. The degree to which we are living in that biblical joy, that place of fulfillment, is a pretty good indicator of our own spiritual health. Because joy, being one of the fruits of the Spirit, is the product of the Holy Spirit living and working in us. The further we stray from an intentional relationship with the Lord, the more vulnerable we are to the enemy's attempts to steal, kill, and destroy our joy. We are more apt to seek comfort in things that never quite fill us up. We're more vulnerable to criticism toward ourselves and others. Matthew Henry once said, Joy in the Lord will guard you from the empty pleasures the tempter uses to bait his hooks. Joylessness is a trial and the enemy delights in our suffering. So, what do you do if you feel joyless? Well, Go to Jesus and ask him to restore your joy. Psalm 51.12 says, Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to, to sustain me. It is human nature to pull away in times of trouble. Actually, it's just as much human nature to pull away in times of success or lack of trouble. During... We... Especially during trouble, sometimes we withdraw from the one who has everything we need. He doesn't withdraw from us. We withdraw from him. So run to him. Draw near to him. And he promises that he will restore his joy to you and he will sustain you. Joy, as I said, is one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. As it's written in John chapter 15, Jesus is the vine and we are the branches. Think about that analogy. A branch cannot produce fruit separate from the vine. Life-giving water flows through the vine to the branches. A branch that is well-fed will produce wonderful fruit. 
A branch that is separated from the vine will wither. It'll die and it will produce no fruit. If we remain connected to the Lord, we have constant access to his life-giving water, which will bring about the fruit of joy in our lives. We can weather the storms if we are firmly rooted in Christ. So, just as a branch is completely dependent on the vine, would you say that you are 100% dependent on Jesus? Are you filled with the joy of the Spirit or are you allowing the enemy to steal your joy? I would venture to guess that many of us have seasons of both. I find myself seeking the Lord and depending on Him more and more because of the difference it makes in how I experience life, in spite of my circumstances. But I do get complacent at times. I get lazy about spending time in the Word or I reclaim the ill-founded idea that I can control life circumstances. I look for joy in temporary, worldly things. I will tell you this. It is 100% true. If I find myself losing joy, it is usually a pretty strong indicator that I am not putting my dependence, my trust in the Lord. And I'm allowing the enemy a seat at my table. I'm allowing the enemy to steal the joy that is available to me through Christ Jesus. So think on that, sister friend. If joy is the barometer for your spiritual health, how healthy is your relationship with my friend Jesus? Some food for thought, right? So until next time, I pray that the Lord fills you with gratitude, peace, and His amazing grace. Oh, and His fulfilling joy. I pray this episode blessed you, spoke to you, or encouraged you in some way. If so, please share it with a friend and head on over to Apple Podcasts to leave me a review. That's the only way for me to know if you're enjoying the show. Nothing blesses me more than to hear from you. Also, come on over to our free Facebook community. This is a great place for us to support one another on our faith and leadership journeys. You can find the link to the group in the show notes or go to gracefieldleader.com forward slash community. If you have questions or content ideas for the show, please send me a message on SpeakPipe or via email. Go to gracefilledleader.com forward slash contact and leave a written or voice recorded message. I would love to know how I can best serve you on the podcast. Now to him who can do immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. Ephesians 3 verse 20. Until next time, my friends, God bless.